Hello everyone. This is the first lecture for the Big Data in Earth Science module in CE6000 course. Uh, based on the survey you guys have done, we will have three lectures for the supervised learning subject and three lectures for the unsupervised learning subject. I may have four supervised learning lectures if it's necessary. Through this module, I will introduce the basic concept of machine learning and teach you how to use Python and R libraries. It turned out that many of you guys have experience with Python and R, so I will use Python as our major program language and we'll do a little bit with R because R sometimes provide more useful tools than Python for machine learning tasks. Uh, my basic assumption is that you guys have enough knowledge to understand matrix calculation, probability theory, and advanced calculus. Many of you have showed interest in learning a little bit of math, so I will also incorporate some algebra and calculus in this module. However, if you cannot understand them, you wouldn't have any problems with with following my lectures because most of my examples will be based on coding exercises. Today, I will talk about the, the supervised le learning and we'll have another supervised learning next week. Later in the course, we will explore, explore the unsupervised learning topics of such as, such as association analysis, network analysis, density estimation, clustering, and anomaly, anomaly detection. So today, I will talk about the supervised learning. Here we go. So most of the time, supervised learning is used to find the patterns and relationship between the predictors and X and the response variable Y. Y here is also called the target variable, the label, or the dependent variable. And X is, X is also called the feature variable or independent variable. Through this model, I will stick with the calling Y the response variable and calling X as predictor variable. F here is here indicates the function which maps our predictors to response variable. Usually the predictor variables are, you know, most time represented by X and the response variable represented by Y. So this is totally normal. And the general goal in supervised learning is to find the patterns and relationship between the predictors X and the response variable Y. Through this module, I will use matrix notation because matrix notation is used when we manipulate the data set in program language. Here we have two real world example. First, we make a model to predict the house price. In the left box here, we have n samples for one response variable, which is a size of m by one vector. And we have three predictor variables here, which include the location of house, year of building, and average distance to main roads. The main goal of the, the, the supervised machine learning is finding a function f, which can accurately predict y, which is the house prices here. Secondly, in earth science research areas, we can predict latent heat fluxes and runoff together with relevant environmental variables. Here we have n samples of two response variables, and we have four predictors, which include average temperature, rainfall, event transpiration, and soil moisture. Same as the left side, we want to find the f, the function, which can accurately predict latent heat flux and runoff at the same time. Before we move forward, I'd like to explain how you can follow this lecture. My central, my central goal is to teach you ready to use machine learning algorithms using real world and earth science data sets. To do this, to do this I will use DeepNote and Google Colab to share and run example codes. All the homework also will be will need to be submitted by sharing the links to your theme note and Google Code website. For today's lecture, please visit the site, the, the theme note site here, and sign in. Let me show you how we can go with the theme note. 
So you can find the link to this lecture, the, the, find the links for today's lecture from my email, my last email. And all you need to do is learn the code by clicking the button here. So for example, you can click the button here, then you can simply learn the, the code block without you know, installing all the program languages, the programs and library. I also strongly recommend you download the Noto file I uploaded in UVA Collab site and play with it. So for example, this code block is related to slide number four. So you can check the code at the same time you are following my lecture so, and feel free to stop and study code lines and please do not hesitate to contact me if you have any questions. Let's go back to today's slides. So please learn the code and learn the the code that produced this figure, you can easily find the, the code block because I you know, noted the page number on the code block. Here I simulated 100 samples of response variable Y and the range of the predictors from zero to, the zero to one. The simple goal for this example case is that we want to predict Y when the Y values, the X value is are 0 0.4 and 0.62. We can maybe guess that the y value is, is around one when, when x is zero, when x is 0.4, the y value is around seven. And when x is six, 0 0.62, the y value is around two. Through today's lecture, we will learn how to predict y values based on linear or nonlinear regression models. So let's start from the linear models. So linear models refer to a class of models where the output, the predicted their value is a linear combination, the weighted sum of the input variables. Where X is here, this equation show the, show the simple linear regression model equation where X is a factor of predictors and Y hat. Bar X is the predicted response at X. The coefficient or weight beta hats are often selected by minimizing the square residue squared residues of the training data. Maybe also described as ordinary least square OLS. But there are other uh, and better ways to estimate the parameters in linear regression that we might have chance to discuss later in the course. It includes less so rich and robust regressions. And let me know if you are interested in these mindset. So first we can use simple regression, linear regression to create a model to predict why. With a simple regression model, we only have two parameters, the beta zero and beta one here. And we use the training data to estimate these parameters. To do this, we use Ordinarily, ordinarily square the OLS approach and OLS uses the weight coefficient that minimize the residual sum of square, the RSS last function over the training data D here. So this equation indicates the finding the minimum value of the finding the beta which minimize the RSS. The parameters that minimize the residual sum of square RSS, the loss function over the training data can be calculated based on these equation, equation one and two. It is easy to derive. So your first homework is to derive this equation. So let me go back to the dim note. So, this code block here shows how we can get these two parameters for the simple regression model. Please go through these code lines and make sure you understand these equations. They will help you to understand how machine learning algorithm works in the future. So based on these two equations, we, we get beta zero and beta one. 
around this equation, we can get the beta, beta zero and beta one around 6.65 and the minus 8.07 respectively. And another way to get these parameter is using sqlearn SQ Python package. So let's see how we can do that with the Python package. This is really simple as you can see here. So, so you can just simply uh, read, read these code lines and you can figure out how we can you know, build, a, build a simple regulation model with the uh, sqlearn package. So as you can see here, the estimated parameters calculated from equation one and two are exactly not or very similar as the value calculated from SQLearn package. You can also check the regression result using step model API package. And please feel free to check the result if you are interested. And the one thing that you should not miss is the p value here. I believe you guys know what p values p value means here. Uh, let me remind you that if the p-value is lower than 0 0.05, we say that the parameter estimation are significant. So you should always check p-value before you use your model. With this simple regression model, we can easily make predictions. Here, I simulate 100 random x value and plotted the, plotted the result. Please check the code, code line to see how I create this figure. And the green line show the predictive value from our simple regression model. With this simple regression model, can you trust the predictive result? If not, how can we make, the be make them better? Yes, yes, we can. We may need to consider the slightly more complex model to make a better prediction. As, we, as defined by the simple regression model, we only have two parameters that we need to estimate, the beta zero and beta one. Thus, the model complexity is minimal. But the data here appears to have a structures that is more complex than linear. A parametric approach to add complex, complexity is to, is to incorporate polymeric terms into the model. So, a quadratic model is shown with equation three here. We can add polynomial terms to make the model better. And, and let's learn how we can obtain these three parameters, parameters, the beta zero, beta one, and beta two, and how much we can get from this complex model. First, I believe the the matrix notation always or allows us to understand big data and make it easy to estimate parameters. Here we have size a size of three by one vector. To find the better parameters, which minimize the residual sum of square loss, we use OLS again. Please look at these equations and check how we can estimate better values. I believe the matrix notation always allows us to understand big data and make it easy to estimate parameters. Here we have a size of three by one vectors because we added one polynomial term here. And we have a size of three by one beta vectors because we need to estimate the three parameters as shown in the previous slide. Now we need to solve for beta using matrix notation to find the beta hats that minimize the RSS. I use hat here because this is hat because it indicates the estimated value of beta. Now we have simple matrix operation and derivative rules. Hopefully you still 
remember the matrix calculus. If you don't, please Google matrix cookbook to refresh your memory. So the best scalar solution here is this, this one. And let's go back to see how we can implement this in Python data structure. With this code block, you can see how we can implement this solution to find best square solution for three beta for the quadratic model. Please check this code line. With the equation three here, actually we can calculate three betas, beta, beta zero, one, and two. With the code, code block I just show you, you can make a prediction with the quadratic model we just made. The green dot here indicates the predicted values here, or simi similarly, we can use a skill learn package to easily calculate these parameters and make a prediction. So let's check the code block. So this code block shows how we can use the Python package to find the, be uh, find the best square solution for three beta for the quadratic model. Now we need to know the model's performance. And to do that, we can use the mean square error, MSC metrics. As you can see here, the quadratic model does much better. So it seems like uh, if we consider more terms and make more complex models, we have a better chance to make a good prediction. So why not try more, more complex models by increasing the polynomial degree? Here I plotted six different degrees of polynomial models. For example, if the degree is one, it means it is simple linear model. And if D here is larger than two, it is a quadratic model. As you can see here, using a higher degree would, would, higher degree would further reduce the RSS, but the fitting curve would be would, would less smooth. So you may now have questions about which polynomial degree we should use. And why don't we use model with hundreds of degrees or very complex models? You will be able to answer these kind of questions as you learn this course. So actually we can increase the complexity of model as high as the number of the data sample. For example, K nearest neighbor model or KNN model are commonly used to predict response variable if we have enough data samples. The KNN method is a non-parametric local method, meaning that to make a prediction, the y hat bar x, it only used the training data in the density of x. For example, if you want to predict the y value when x is 0.4, we can consider different KNN model. Each number here indicate the point that is closest to 0.4. So the lower the value, the closer to 0.4. Here, if K is one, it means you use the nearest point to number one here. And if K is two, you average the Y value of the, these two points and so on. So if K is N, it means you use the average of all observed y value for the predicted value 0 0.4. So here are some important notes for KNN. So with a skip learn package, we can easily make a KNN regression model. This figure shows a KNN model when K is 20. Let's check the deep note block. So this deep note block shows how we can implement KNN in Python. You can use KNeighbor regressors library to make your KNN model. This is very simple. Here I made five KNN models with different K values. 
the complexity of a KNA model increases as K decreases. And the least complex model, which is a constant, occur, occur when K is equal to N. And the most complex model occurs when K is equal to one. And the effective degree of freedom or EDF for KN model is N divided by K. So EDF here is a, is a measure of model complexities. It is approximately the number of parameters that are estimated in the model. You can also check the MSE value of each model and as k increases, the MSA value decreases. Does this mean we should always use the higher k value for the KN model? I hope you will find this answer as you take the rest of these supervised learning lectures. So, to, so today we have covered basics, but very important supervised machine learning concepts with simple linear regression quadratic regression and KN regression models. In the next lectures, we will learn which models we should use and how to make more effective prediction models. Please refer to my last email for the homework information and the due date for the first homework is next Friday, April 8th. That's it for today.